Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we will be looking into how you can actually communicate with the Redis database using a Spring Boot application. Now in Redis you can store it as a Redis hash or a JSON document. We will be exploring both these mechanisms and we will be looking into how you can specify indexes on certain fields as well as making certain fields searchable as a text based search. So with this let's actually look into how you can set up the project and write some code. So let's go to start.spring.io and here we are going to create a sample project. So we are going to make use of Maven and we are going to add the web dependency. So this is only to create some endpoints through which we will store some data into Redis. Now next we are going to add the docker compose support. So with this uh, the docker compose file that we have it will start up on the application startup. So with this, we are going to re call this as with a particular group ID and then we are going to give it a name like service. Okay. With this, you can generate this particular sample. Then what we are going to do is now we are going to look at the code that I have actually written. So I have this code here. So first thing, let's look at the pom.xml file. So in this pom.xml file here, we have this one dependency that I've added here. So this Redis om spring is a dependency that we will use actually for communicating with Redis. Now spring also provides this particular dependency called as spring boot starter data Redis. This dependency that is provided by Redis itself is built on top of the spring data. So it has the capabilities of spring data JPA but it provides some extra things that we want to explore today. Things like indexing, things like searching, and there's also something called as a bloom filter, but in this tutorial, we will be only looking at the indexes as well as the searches part. Add this particular dependency, and the rest of it is the same that we got from the sample. If you want, you can write unit tests or integration tests using test containers, and that's all that you need, okay? So now let's look at the first thing. So Redis provides two ways of storing data. You can store a document itself as well as you can store Redis hashes. So first thing we will look at is Redis hashes. So for this, I have this package here wherein I've created this person class and here I specified a Redis hash. Now on top of the various fields that I have, I've specified here that the name is going to be indexable. That means I can specify and search based on this particular field that is the name field. And then I have the searchable annotation with which I can actually do a full text search on this last name such that I can specify certain patterns through which I can search the last name actually. And then I can get the entire key. Okay. So now this ID that we have here is going to be used to store the particular key for this particular Redis hash when we store this particular Redis hash into Redis. That's all that you need for defining the Redis hash. Then along with this, we need to specify a repository, right? Because using this repository, which is based on actually the spring data, we're going to use the same thing. But here there's one more extra method that we have is the search by last name. So using the search by last name, actually, you can now search using the last name. Why? Because in this, we have specified this searchable annotation. This is the minimal thing that you need to actually set up your Redis hash. Now, what I've done along with this is I've specified some endpoints. Now, in this endpoint, I have this person endpoint wherein I can store something into the repository. And then I have this get endpoint, which has two parts. One here is that I can provide a parameter called as name or I can search by the last name. So these are the two parameters I provided. I have not created separate handlers for these. Rather, I have just done it in the same handler here. So now if I have the name, then I'll search by the name. If I'm going to search by the last name, then I'm going to search by the last name here. So now let's see how actually this works and let's actually start this particular application. So I'm going to start this here. So now with Spring 3.1, you know that we can actually start a Docker Compose file with the application being started. So how does this work is that if you have a Compose file or a Docker Compose file in the root of your project and you start your application, it will automatically pick up that particular Docker Compose file and then afterwards start that Docker Compose. And also 
not only that it also does all the required connections because it detects what kind of image you're starting and then it does all the connection strings so that's the reason if i go to the resources directory you don't have any property set why because this is now automatically taken care by the new module that you have that is the docker compose support so this is the dependency that we had added using the spring starter here so now our application has all started let's actually do some requests so i'm going to now have this particular person endpoint here and i'm specifying a particular payload here that is jane and smith now i'm going to send this and as you can see an id has been generated for us and i have this jane smith been stored inside okay now let's actually do the first thing that is search by the field that is the name field so i have this get request here wherein i specify the endpoint and i'm specifying the query parameter name and i'm specifying jane here okay so when i search this i can actually now search the entire entity that we actually stored into redis now if i remove and i provide some kind of a pattern here say like this this is not going to work why because this is the indexable field. So you need the entire payload or you need the entire value to find a particular uh, Redis entry from Redis. So for this, we have that searchable field, remember? So that's why let's go to the searchable field one. So we have this one. Now here, instead of specifying name, I'm going to say search last name and I'm going to specify my last name pattern. Say it is Prabhu. And in this case, I don't have this particular pattern and it was Smith that was present. So let me search this. And as you can see, I specified a particular pattern here called a Smith. And with this, actually, it actually fetched that particular entry from Redis itself. So this is the way how you can actually do a Redis search. You don't need to specify the key. You can specify certain other attributes and using this, you can do some kind of a search. Now, this is the way we could actually store and retrieve uh, Redis hashes, right? Now, wouldn't it be a convenient way if you had some client through which you can actually look at the particular keys? So for this, let me look at this particular Docker Compose file. So if you see this Docker Compose file, I'm making use of this Redis stack because this is the stack that actually provides this searchable thing. Remember the normal Redis, if you start using that, it will not actually provide you the search capabilities. You need the Redis stack version to have the search capabilities. Now, along with this, I have this Redis inside. Now, this is a browser based client through which I can actually connect to the Redis instance and then actually do some querying, run commands and as well as have it in a visualized manner. Now, this has been exposed now at 8001, right? So let's actually access this particular port. So let's go here and say localhost and I'm going to specify 8001. So now in 8001, I already have this database connection, but let's actually see when you start up, make sure you add a particular database connection because you know the host and the port. Now, one caution that you need to do here because we are running this using Docker, what you need to do is if you specify local host, even though we have specified the port mapping, Redis is also running as a Docker image, right? It's running as a container. If I specify local host here and specify the port, this is not going to work because it's going to search in its own instance. And this is not going to work. So what you need to specify is you need to specify the IP address of your host on which you are now exposing the Redis port. So you are exposing the Redis port on my machine right now using this, right? using these port mappings. So in order to access this Redis, I need to specify the IP address of my machine and then use this particular port. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to specify this here. Now here I'm going to specify the database as the default thing. Okay. With this, let's say add. So this is already present with me. So I'm going to just directly connect. Now here, if you see here, let's go to the browser section. And the browser section, now you can see the first person that I kind of stored here. If I open this, you can see here now the ID field, the last name and the first name. So this has been stored here. Now, remember, we talked about the search indexes, right? So let's look at the search one. So here we have this particular person index that has been created. You can see this student index because I will show you what is this next. So 
the person index has been created and using this person index now i can actually do a query here also like this smith as you can see this actually found that particular entry from the redis hash okay so now this is how you can deal with redis hashes now redis also provides a mechanism through which you can actually store documents also so this is the second section that we'll be talking about so in this document section wherein we have exactly the same kind of a model but here we are specifying the annotation document in the previous one we had specified here redis hash but in this one we are going to specify here document here so now this is going to be stored as a json now since we have already started this particular application let's actually try and store something in redis as a document so let's go to the student create and i'm going to create the student yeah i'm the student and i'm going to say send so now this has actually created a particular entry into my redis database so let's actually go and visualize this now so if i go to the browser here and then as you can see we have a new entry here so now this has stored here as a student here let's open this and if you see here now this has been stored as a particular json you can individually also query for each of this particular fields and let's look at how we can do that also so let's go to postman here in postman i'm going to search for the field first of all so i'm going to search for first the name so i'm going to specify my name here and i'm going to send and this is actually now going to search by my name now the second part is searching by the full text based search now here i'm specifying just my initials here pra and star and i send this and it has returned me the entire payload so with this you can actually now store documents as a json as well as you can store redis hashes also now let me show you some extra capabilities that this ui also provides you can also run cli commands here. now there are most of the cli commands that i tried and it works fine so like for example if i search for h get and i'm going to specify say probably this particular key from here and i'm going to specify i want a name field okay i say send and this does not return me anything why because the actual key is if you see this is the actual key you need to copy this key go to the cli command and say edge get key and specify the field that you want so if you can see now it has returned me jane so this is the way you can actually run commands actually now let me show you the same thing that happened with the student index now in the student index now i will actually try doing a search here and i'm going to specify here pra b and enter so now this is actually searching that particular document you can see this is the value that is been fetched right now so we saw how we can actually store something inside a redis hash as well as we could store a json document we saw how we can query it and also we saw how we can do it using this redis insight ui and search it using this particular ui now if you like this particular video give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this particular channel for more such videos to come till then take care and see you in my next one